right. You want to introduce us or you want me to do it? Sure. Hey, welcome to the uh, next episode of the Crawl USA podcast. I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And we are fucking thrilled beyond belief to be here with you this morning. Woo! Podcasting. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, did I say morning? No, it's not really morning. It's it's afternoon. <laughs> Feels like morning. Uh, all right. So today we are going to talk about trail ratings. The good old trail ratings, right? We've been different places now. You know, we've been, what, Katemsi, uh 4x4 Crawl Week, San Hollow for Trail Hero, Moab, Moab Wolf Caves, uh, Caballo, Las Cruces, Montrose. Right. So we're Wolf, getting, ar- Wolf- getting around, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Every one of them has trail ratings. Yeah, they sure do. Every one of them does not seem to line up for anything. No, they do not. Subject of uh, much controversy. Um, as uh, you know, I uh, do trail guides for Trails Off-Road. And when I first signed on with those guys, there was a big debate, you know, about the trail ratings. Um, because you've got different styles of wheeling, right? And so um, ratings for someone who's a casual off-roader um, are different than ratings for a seasoned buggy driver, Right. So, who's right? So, is there anything you can think of that has any sport, anything that has universal rating for it that would be consistent? I think uh, the goals in basketball are consistent, right? One point, two points, or three points. Okay. Totally consistent. Not a rating, but yes, that's true. It is consistent. Um, How about... How about this is what I skiing. What's your ratings in skiing? I'm not really familiar with. Well, the trails have ratings, right? Yeah, you have like the the double black diamond. There you go, and, green, blue, yeah, black, double black. Yeah, right. So that's what four, and there may be some more. I'm not a skier. Sunny Bono, that's a rating. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, um, <clears throat> so. I guess that's the first thing, right? We are used to mostly trail ratings of 1 through 10. Uh, recently, I learned that you can have up to 15. Mm-hmm. At San Olo, yeah, they definitely have them above and beyond 10. Even down in uh, the Caballo area in New Mexico, they have... Oh, so. are we moving up? I think, I think they have some that they, at least um, unofficially, people call 11s, hmm. right? So... I guess that's the first question is, do we have too many? Should we narrow it down to four? Uh, that doesn't really work either, right? Okay. Because you need that kind of granularity because there can be a, a real definitive line between, say, a six and a seven, depending on the area and how they specify the rating. Um, and the way you're built can be on one side of the line or the other. So I think it's good to have that scale. Um, Is it good? No one listens. Well, I think uh, people often overestimate their ability to do the next higher rating. And sometimes that's strictly based on what the vehicle requirements are, right? So they look at the vehicle requirements and say, oh, yeah, I have 37-inch tires and I have a winch and I have a lift and I have recovery gear, so I'm good to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, You know, I'm trying to think, do we see a lot of that where they're on the line or built and maybe just not have driving experience? That I can understand, I guess. Um, you know, because, you know, some people aren't as fortunate to live, you know, a little over an hour away from somewhere where we can get really any level of crawling that we want, mm-hmm. right? Or trail running any any level of anything within an hour or less of where we currently are. So I get that. So they may have a build, built vehicle, not the driving experience yet, um, you know, and go out to a big event and, and want to be at the top of what, what they're built for. 
Um, <clears throat> you know, and it just comes with experience and you got to get it somehow, I guess. So that part I can understand, but man, you know, I think, I think one of the things, I mean, I guess what are trail ratings for? For your own personal decisions or? Well, I think it's for information. Just right? for information. It's, it's to try to set the, the right driver and the right rig with the right level of trail. For their own personal use and right i guess i guess my question is right so who enforces it if you're doing an event and they're allowed on either way well you know my opinion on that if if you have vehicle requirements at an event they need to be adhered to right because if if i'm leading a trail if i'm not on my game and i don't really if I'm just looking down the line and I'm like thinking, okay, everybody looks good to go. And I'm not going around reading the tire size and I'm just looking at it from 20, 30 yards away. That's, that's bitten me in the ass before. Um, and that's tough. That's tough on everybody. And I think, you know, everybody has a good time, but the people that really have a good time are the people that are not really, rated for the trail because the crew will get them through right you'll get them through the trail most of the time repair and, them everything and so they're they're stoked right but the people that were really ready for the trail built for the trail have the experience for the trail they're hating it because they're sitting around waiting for hours for hours for you know the 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 crew the trail boss and the crew to to get everybody else through it and so it's a drag for them. So I, I think they are necessary. I don't think we're ever going to have a case where everybody agrees. How how so in in looking at it now? How do you think the trail ratings matter for right? Like a seven here is comparable to a what in Moab? Oof! See, that's another problem, right? That we've run into. At events, right? Because people travel f for events, and somebody that's done a a nine in Sand Hollow, or or an eight, you know, in Moab, they're going to get on an eight in New Mexico, and uh, it's not going to be a good day, right? So they're different from area to area, and that's that's why I don't think we're ever going to have a this synchronicity where a trail rating in one place is going to translate wherever you go. And I, I would imagine, I mean, I haven't been out east to, to do any, uh, you know, rock slamming, but I imagine those ratings aren't going to be relative to anything I've done because I've done crawling in the desert southwest. Um, you know, Right, like an eight out there means you need 500 horsepower. and Probably. You need you know, like a monster truck. Right, where we could do an eight here, but, man, yeah, that's right. A couple of shots of whiskey and some nitrous, maybe. I don't know. How about this? Does it count? Let's just take a mid-range uh, trail. Um, for us locally, I would say maybe, I, I think it's Hidden Valley with that one ledge. Mm -hmm. right um man if you is how's the trail rating worker does it matter how you make it over that obstacle you pick your line you crawl it you get up over it right is that a trail rating of some or you just skinny pedal it and slam up it and keep doing it until you break or you make it up oh i think that's a good question but <clears throat> i'll go back to the trails off-road uh, trail rating system, which is conservative for sure, but for good reason, right? That's a, a public site and, um, you want people to be cautious, careful, not get in over their heads. Um, so the method that you get over, it doesn't matter what, what matters in the trail rating is, okay, how, in the case of this the step that I, I think you're referring to, right? How tall is it, right? Because that's something you can quantify, right? How tall are, are, this, are the steps, 
right? How long are the waterfalls? Are they vertical, near vertical, right? These are things that you can kind of put into perspective, right? Uh, if there are boulders on the trail, how big are they? You know, are they tire size or are they basketball size? Um, and then there are places where it's it's harder to to kind of measure that. Well, I, I think you make a great point. What's your tire size? Me? No, well, right? If you're describing a boulder at a 33 versus a 42, it's a pretty significant boulder. Sure, and, that, and that's where experience comes in, right? Um, if you have driven enough to kind of put that boulder size into perspective with your tire size and your articulation, um, that's a good thing. But, you know, with videos, YouTube and, and Instagram and everything else, if you see a rig built like yours going through something, even if it's super gnarly, your assumption is that you're going to be able to make it, right? Not counting for experience. Um, that's why you asked the question earlier about, you know, should there be fewer levels and some of these events we go to right there's basically um no easy hard medium and, and hard, hard and extra hard yeah hot and extra spicy right or or easy medium hard that's really general and we've seen firsthand events where you have um the easy group but there are no easy trails and if i'm John Q. Public, and I'm looking online, and I'm I'm going to go, and I have a stock rig. Easy to me means I can I can do that. That's you know that's that's up my alley. And if an easy trail at an event is just because it's an event for well built rigs and and hardcore crawling, an easy might be a a six or a seven, which is way beyond. Easy, two or three, right? Right, which which most people would assume easy means I can do it on my in my stock rig that I just my you know, my JT that I just drove off the the showroom floor. So So the last thing I have is there a way to universal it? I think we covered that. I don't think we can. I don't right? think you can. I think it's um I think the only way you can do that is on your own based on the different places. Okay. So yeah, sum that up. Right. I think that'd be a good summary for it. I'm a new guy. Say I just bought a gladiator, right? Just like you said, what are your two or three key points for me to look for when watching videos? Other rigs with a similar build. Right, because that's going to be an indicator. Right. Um, you have to understand that that wheelbase is going to give you advantages on some things. It's going to be a disadvantage on other things. And my advice would be to watch all the videos you can. I mean, that's what we do when we're going to a new area or a new trail that we haven't been on. It's all hearsay, right? And when you talk to... 10 drivers, you'll get 15 different versions of how easy or hard it is. In whichever vehicle they had at the time. Right. Right. Yeah. We talked to the the old dude. He he did it on 31-inch tires and open diffs and a, and a flat fender, right, all day long. <laughs> right? And then you see these monsters with 46-inch tires that can't make it up, you know? So there's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um. But, you know, it's, it takes experience. It took me, um, not that I'm the experienced guy, but it took me a while to understand that, you know, a nine in San Hollow, I've done a nine rated trail there. I can't do a nine in Caballo, the way I'm built, not without pulling line and having a lot of help. Like I've got to go with some, some buggy guys and be kind of sandwiched in the middle if I want to hope to get through there. And I definitely couldn't have done it on Dana 44s, right? And yeah. it's questionable whether I could even do it now. So 
um, understanding that and knowing, I think you have to accept that it's okay. It's okay to, and people should say something, right? If you, if you're lined up with a rig on a, on a seven and they're used to doing sevens, um, seven in New Mexico and, and they're used to doing sevens in Utah, like, you know, probably good to have a, a little conversation about it because it's going to be different. It's, and, you know, there's a higher penalty for failure on, on the harder stuff or, or the higher rated stuff in Utah um, in that, you know, you might fall to your, your death. But out here, that's uh, that same trail rating. You're not going to have any traction. And it's probably too steep, too vertical and sharp cornered for you to just smash it and hit it with with the skinny pedal because you're going to break something because all you're going to do you it's not round stuff that you're going to bounce over in a lot of cases you're going to just hit it square and hard on your on your frame your belly pan your links whatever so there's a you know i i i guess the moral is if you're new to an area and the terrain's a lot different than where you normally wheel. Maybe the first day or two of an event, start on a lower level than you think you need to be on and see how that is, see how it stacks up to what you're used to. If you start um, like on a, on a five, and you think you should be doing eights and nines, but the five really kicks your ass, then maybe, you know, dial it back for until you get familiar with that area. Yeah, I think uh, I think those are great points. I think the other thing is maybe look at the rigs that you're with, check their corners, the corner of their vehicles, see how much damage they have, right? You know, I mean, if that means they're leaning into things, they're hitting things, right? Maybe not for sand hollow kind of areas, but maybe some, right? But, you know, are their fenders hit, right? Um, you know, if you're in the newer vehicle that you're not really ready to beat up if you will right um i think that'd be one thing too uh you know because while we try to keep our vehicles fairly clean and nice man shit happens shit happens right but that's a great point that you bring up right if you have a tolerance pretty high tolerance for damage then yeah you know (laughs) go at it take it up a notch do yeah do do a higher rate of trail than um you know, because that's how you, you grow. You have to, you know, if if you want to, you know, get into the, the rough stuff, you have to do progressively more difficult, more technical trails. And the um, it's it's funny, you know, the the variety of people that you meet and, and the level of damage that they're accepting of. I mean, there are some people that come out in a brand new rig that they just bought and paid you know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars for, and they're willing to beat the shit out of it on a hard trail. Um, and then you have other people that have done it forever, and they don't want, they don't even want to kiss a diff cover on a rock. You know, so um, yeah. So that's out there. Uh, all right, good discussion there. Anything else to add? No. Let's go wheeling. All right. Let's go wheeling. We'll see you on the next episode. Uh, If you're watching this, want to send us a sticker, we'll put it up. Let us know. Uh, Also, if you have any comments and want to hear us talk about anything, put them there. That'd be great. We'll we'll discuss it. And we'd love to hear your opinions on on trail ratings and uh, any of the stuff we talked about. Leave it in the comments below. All right. Thanks. Later.